Welcome back to Biology from Jay's house. I didn't collect homework because there wasn't homework. I didn't go over homework because there wasn't homework. But I know you guys are thinking Jay sure talks a lot, but what's the point? What is the point anyways? Okay, so let's learn some stuff. Let's go to the top, write the date. Let's see, I think this is supposed to be on the 25th. Uh, again, as usual, that date might be wrong. Put the correct date if that's wrong. Let's go all the way left, right, the point. So again, this is the immune system that we're talking about. And I'd like to know, how do macrophages and helper T cells work together? So macrophages and helper T cells somehow work together to fight disease. Remember, that's the whole point of this unit. Well, we have two notes today. The first one, of course, is macrophage. Macro, M-A-C-R-O, phage, P-H, making that F sound, A-G-E, macrophage. And that is a white blood cell. Oh, that's right. White blood cells uh, fight disease. A white blood cell that eats foreign particles and infectious cells. Okay, and helper T cells. Let's keep going. Again, you can always pause the video if I'm going too fast. Uh, what is a helper T cell? A white blood cell. Oh, that's right. White blood cells are things that fight disease and they come in many flavors. So we're learning two right now, macrophage and helper T cell. A white blood cell that reads messages from macrophages and decides which type of immunity to activate? Oh, just barely snuck it in. So Turns out that white blood cells come in many different flavors. Uh, before we get into it, uh, you need this in your notes. So don't forget to pause the video, make sure this is in your notes, and then come back. So pause, welcome back. Um, I, I, I need a quick disclaimer here. We're not gonna go over every single type of immunity here. Uh, and the next couple days, I'm just gonna show you kind of a general approach that our body takes to fight disease. As you might guess, um, there's a lot of ways that we can get sick. So there's a lot of ways that we fight disease. So I don't want you to think that you are going to be virologists, the, you know, finishing <laughs> watching like three to four videos. Uh, but this is, this will get you most of the way there and kind of show you the, the general approach that our body takes to um, fight disease. So we're going to talk about macrophages first, and then we're going to talk about helper T cells, and they'll talk about how those two work together, and that'll be today's class. So uh, note they're both white blood cells. Not surprised there because all white blood cells um, fight disease, and that's what we're talking about today. So 
let's say that you have skin. And if it's my skin, it has these big long hairs growing out of it. So there, there we go, it's my forearm. And underneath your skin is muscle and blood and you know, the muscle and blood and other cells, you got bones in there and all this kind of stuff. And everything under your skin is actually completely safe because skin. Skin, yay. So when, let's say, bacteria tries to get in, ho, 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 I'm going to get you, donk. It can't get past the skin. Come on, I want in, donk, 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 donk. Hey, I can't teach the immune system without at least mentioning that <laughs> your number one line of defense, the, the thing that keeps you most healthy is actually your skin. And uh, taking care of your skin is a really good idea. Also, if you have viruses, same thing. Donk, 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 donk. They're not going to get into your muscle. They're not going to get into your blood. They're not going to get into your organs or anything as long as that skin is safe. But now let's say that you were playing with scissors, which you know not to do, and now you have a cut. And that cut goes all the way down to a blood vessel. Uh-oh. Now, guess what? Woohoo! Bacteria is in. Woohoo! Viruses are in. And now we have to deal with them. Right? So as long as you don't have cuts, you're good for most disease, right? Uh, of course, you still have, you know, your mouth, your nose, your ears, your eyes, you know, other natural openings. But uh, most of the time, it's your skin that keeps you safe. And this is also why... If you get a cut, you know, put some antibiotic on it, put a Band-Aid on it, you know, really try to plug this up as much as you can so that as little bacteria and as little few viruses as possible get in. But now that they're in, they're in. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to call a macrophage. Now, the metaphor that I'm going to use for these videos is that Think of us, think of your body as like our country, the United States of America. So our body is the entire country. It is broken up into states, which are broken up into counties and towns and cities and all these other little bits, right? Uh, and bad things can happen two different ways. One is actual people can come in and hurt uh, people in America, hurt America, you know, all that kind of stuff. Or programs can hurt um, the economy, can, you know, identity theft and stuff like that and hurt the people. So you can either have living attacks on America or you can have digital non-living attacks on America. And as I said in the previous video, we're going to consider this to be bacteria, so our little... Um, <laughs> cartoon thief there is bacteria and that is alive so that is a living thing that's trying to get us sick and the digital way of getting sick is a virus which is non-living so now in our cut two different types of infection have come in oh no whatever shall we do first thing we need to do is and I'm going to put one of these up here just as a little reminder, I'm going to make like a little key over here. This is called a macrophage. So the first thing that happens is, well, when you see a crime happening, what's the first thing you do? You call the cops, right? You just go, hey, there's like weird stuff going on. Somebody's getting hurt or someone's getting robbed or something. Cops, deal with it. And that's what the macrophage is. It is the cops. And the first thing they do is they don't really ask a ton. They only ask one question, really. And we'll talk about that in just a second. But really what they do is they come up and they go, hey, you, you're not supposed to be here. And they throw them in their police car. No, I was framed. Yeah, sure you were, buddy. And then they just take them off. 
right? And that can happen with viruses too. They drive up and they go, you don't belong here. And they throw them in their police car and they drive them off, right? That's kind of, you know, how we deal with crime in, uh, in America. And so that's what I'm using as my metaphor. But how does, how do these macrophages, and just like regular cops, they're just driving around all the time, right? Do, 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 do. They're just driving around. They're um, stereotypically driving through the bloodstream, but they can actually get through the body other ways. Um, and they're just driving the streets, just looking for bad guys. And what they do is they actually kind of go door to door and they say, hey, do you know the chemical code that signifies that you are part of our body? So let's say that the code for my body, and we'll say that this is happening in my body, that the code for my body is, of course, Prince. So the card, so the macrophage comes up and goes, hey, what's the code to prove that you're part of the body? And my cell goes, it's Prince. And he goes, oh yeah, you belong here. Hey, what's the code to signify that you're part of my body? And it says, it's Prince. And he goes, you belong here. And then it comes up to bacteria and it says, hey, what's the code to say that you're part of the body? And bacteria goes, uh, Rumpelstiltskin? And the macrophage says, nope, it's not. Boom. And off it goes. So the fact that this guy said Rumpelstiltskin, which was the wrong code, is what gets him thrown into the macrophage and literally the macrophage will absorb it it will if it, it it eats the entire thing and puts the entire disease inside of it that's why it's a cop car it actually absorbs the disease it surrounds it completely and notice i'm not worried about this bacteria anymore i'm not worried about this criminal right he's not getting out of the cop car there's like bars in there and bulletproof glass and stuff he is totally contained Right, and so this macrophage can drive wherever he wants, and then all the cells are safe because the disease, even though it may be right nearby, the disease is contained. Right, so that's what macrophages do. They eat the disease, and um, then they work with the helper T cell. But we'll deal with that in just a second. So what do macrophages do? They drive around, and they ask everybody they interact with, What's the code? Prince. Oh, okay, you're cool. What's the code? Prince. Okay, you're cool. What's the code? Um, is it love? No, it's not love. Gah! And it eats, completely surrounds the disease. And now all the cells around it are safe because the disease has been contained. So the macrophages, and I'm leaving a little key up here, the macrophages, first thing they do is they eat the disease. If you don't know the code, you don't belong here, they eat the disease. Okay, so I feel like macrophage is more or less done. Check, what do they do? Eat disease. And technically they eat anything that doesn't know the code, right? Okay, that's cool. Now, what about the helper T cell? So again, I'm going to make a little code key over here. This guy is going to be our, let's do pink. Helper T cell. So, what the helper T cell is, is he's the detective. He also flows around the blood and stuff like that, but he waits till he's called. He doesn't knock door to door, hey, what's the code, what's the code? He knows the code, but he doesn't, that's not his job. That's the macrophage's job. He is the detective. He waits in the office and also flows around the body until the macrophage goes, hey, helper T cell. Yes? Hey, I found bacteria. You got to come check this out. And then the helper T cell comes over and goes, Oh, yes, let me point my little magnifying glass at your bacteria. Hmm, what do we have here? Hmm. And it also asks the macrophage, 
uh, what code did he say? And the macrophage says, he said Rumpelstiltskin. I don't even know if I know how to spell that, so work with me. Stiltskin? That's spelled wrong, but who cares? Hmm, Rumpelstiltskin, you said. Oh, look, he's living. He's clearly bacteria. Okay, and then the helper T-cell takes that information, takes two pieces of information. One, the fact that it's bacteria, because we're going to probably deal with bacteria in one way, and the code that he was trying to use, and he figures out what to do. So he doesn't interact directly with the bad guy. The macrophage deals with the bad guys. He deals with the macrophage. And he needs to know two things. Is it bacteria or virus? That's the first thing. And the second thing is, what code did he try to use? And then he takes that information and decides what to do. Decides what kind of immunity, you know, what do we do now? Is this just a single bacteria? Oh, well, then we just lock him in jail and we're done, right? Or maybe he's part of a bigger plan. <gasps> ah, call, you know, call the FBI, call the SWAT, you know, who knows? Um, that's his job to figure that out. Same thing here. He comes, this macrophage says, hey, helper T cell. Um, I caught a bad guy. Oh, let me take a look. Mm -hmm. Oh, first thing I notice is it's a virus. Mm -hmm. And uh, what code did he try to use? He tried to use love. Mm. He tried to use love. Okay, I'm going to decide what to do. Mm. And again, that's a helper T cell's job. Is it a bacteria or a virus? Needs to know that. And then what code did he try? Because it's quite possible. He goes, oh, yes, love. We've actually had a lot of these love criminals. Oh, I know exactly what to do when it's a love criminal. And he might be able to actually handle this very quickly if, if we know this code. So if we know the code, he can activate the correct immunization quickly, the, the correct uh, immunity response. And that's actually how immunization works. So if you've ever gotten uh, your shots, right, your uh, immunity shots, right, uh, your vaccines, right, if you've ever been vaccinated, what we do is we send a small amount of a bad guy, a small amount of a disease in. Enough that we're not worried that you're going to actually get sick, that you're gonna, it's going to multiply so much that you're going to have that whole full-blown disease. Just enough that the macrophage can eat it and the helper T cell can read it and learn its code. And then when the helper T cell, along with other white blood cells, figure out what to do with this guy, then they remember it. And that's the idea, so that if another virus comes in, <laughs> and a macrophage picks him up and he uses the same code this helper t-cell goes oh i remember what we did with this virus that tried to use love we can do the exact same thing with this virus that's trying to use love ha ha and they can and um they'd be able to keep us safe much faster and deal with the disease much much faster and that's what vaccines are Okay, so hopefully you understand that macrophages eat disease. They eat everybody who doesn't know the code. The code was Prince. This guy tried to use Rumpelstiltskin. This guy tried to use Love. Both are wrong. So the macrophage ate him and called the helper T cell. And then the helper T cell figures out, is it a bacteria or a virus, and what code did, were they using and after and once they have that information they can then activate the correct immunity so the classes after this one the videos after this one are going to talk about so what does the helper t-cell do 
with this information. But, um, but a lot of immunity starts just like this. Macrophage eats the disease, helper T cell finds out what code it is and whether it's a bacteria and virus and then activates other white blood cells. So we should probably answer the point. So I'm just gonna erase a little bit of this picture because I wanna make sure that we have things like macrophage and helper T cells still pictured here and a couple of these visuals still on the board as we answer this. So how do macrophages and helper T cells work together? So the first thing we know is that macrophages eat the disease technically eats anything that doesn't know the code, right? I knew it was Prince, I don't get eaten. I knew it was Prince, I don't get eaten. I didn't know it was Prince, I got eaten. Right? So it's also foreign particles and stuff like that. So if you get like a splinter, right? The macrophage would try to eat the splinter too because the splinter wouldn't know the code. Right? The macrophage would be like, what's the code? And the splinter would be like, nothing, because splinters can't talk, uh, back, you know, chemically. And then it would try to eat it. So macrophages eat the disease and call the helper T cells. So that's the macrophages job. Eat contain the disease by eating it and then call the, you know, the detective. Call the, you know, kind of bump it up the chain of command. And call the helper T cells, which, so what do the helper T cells do? So I'm changing colors, which decide what to do based on the code the disease used. Now, I'm using this metaphor of code. It's uh, technically not a code. It's uh, antigens. It's um, the same kind of thing that are on uh, red blood cells that define whether it's you have type A blood, type B blood, type AB blood, antigens. Um, the code is technically antigens, but I don't want to spend a lot of time on that. So I'm just going to say the code, right? And the code from my body is going to be different than the code for your body because my body is not your body and your body is not my body, right? So we'd have different antigens, we'd have different codes. So this is one of the reasons that um, organ transplants don't work. You'll hear things like somebody got a liver transplant and it didn't take, the body rejected it. And what that means is that the macrophage came in and asked, you know, if I give you my liver, right? And let's say that your code is Thundercat, my code is Prince. So when the macrophage in your body drives around and asks everybody, what's the code? Your cells would say Thundercat and the macrophage would be like, that's right. And then when it get, comes to the liver that I gave you, my liver would say Prince. <gasps> ah, we've been infected. And that's what it means when, um, when you get a transplant and it doesn't take or your body rejects it, what that means is that it doesn't have the right antigens and the macrophage thinks it's not supposed to be there, right? But that's a story for another day. There we go, macrophages, macrophages eat the disease and call helper T cells and helper T cells decide what to do then. That's all I got for you today. Good luck. <laughs>